Uh, using immunotherapy in uh, glioblastoma is uh, not necessarily a super novel concept. Nevertheless, you know, more and more um, uh, immunotherapeutic approaches are being developed and seen in brain tumors. Um, we see um, vaccine approaches. Um, this has been uh, in the works for, uh, for many years, uh, the different uh, vaccine types uh, that are being used uh, in glioblastoma. Um, and uh, again, uh, the premise of this is uh, the fact that um, immune response uh, can be triggered um, in response to certain antigens and then the immune system can um, in turn be used to fight the tumor. So that's the, that's the idea behind that. Um, in addition to um, uh, the vaccine therapies um, that are being investigated, um, there are also um, uh, drugs uh, that are influencing the immune system. Um, uh, most recently um, uh, popularized uh, by the use in other malignancies uh, are PD-1 inhibitors, um, specifically drugs like nivolumab, pembrolizumab, um, uh, that, uh, or ipilimumab that have been used uh, successfully in uh, melanoma as well as uh, lung carcinoma. Uh, so these are um, sort of the main, uh, so mainstream uh, immunological uh, immunotherapy approaches in, in cancer in general. Um, given the success in um, other malignancies, um, uh, we are now investigating um, uh, utility of immunotherapy in uh, specifically brain carcinoma, brain cancer, primary brain tumors, and glioblastoma being uh, one of the primary targets um, uh, to see if. Um, Indeed, uh, these agents uh, can uh, help um, halt the disease uh, uh, process uh, and extend progression-free survival and overall survival. Um, at this point, we do not have a, any major phase three studies completed um, with any of these agents, so it's hard to, uh, to know uh, what we're going to see, uh, but there's a lot of excitement um, about uh, this approach. Um, and these drugs are being combined with other modalities. Uh, uh, with radiation, for example, um, and uh, with um, other antibodies like um, um, bevacizumab. Um, combination therapies, uh, immunotherapy are exciting. Um, it is, uh, has been shown that, for example, radiation therapy by itself um, can cause uh, changes in the brain uh, that trigger uh, multiple uh, sort of immunogenic or immunologic pathways, um, and um, this could be good targets for uh, PD-1 inhibitors and checkpoint inhibitors uh, in general. So I think we're going to see um, uh, in the future uh, more therapies that are focusing on um, uh, combining treatments. Uh, so let's say radiation plus immunotherapy or radiation plus another agent uh, as opposed to using uh, immunotherapy as a single modality. PD-1 inhibitors and uh, checkpoint inhibitors have been um, uh, utilized successfully in um, predominantly uh, malignancies such as uh, lung carcinoma and melanoma. Um, uh, we uh, know that these drugs uh, definitely can penetrate uh, the blood-brain barrier and can uh, work for malignancies in the brain. Uh, a, 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 a sort of more uh, a profound example is um, a treatment of uh, our former president Carter who developed um, uh, metastases uh, of melanoma to his brain. He was treated with one of the uh, immunotherapies and um, had a successful response. So we know that these uh, drugs um, uh, do get into the brain. Um, there's several of them, uh, several uh, of them out there um, already FDA approved. Uh, one of the initial ones, um, a drug called ipilimumab. Uh, some of the novel ones, uh, nivolumab or uh, pembrolizumab, um, are also um, uh, uh, approved for uh, for treatment uh, of both melanoma and, and lung carcinoma. Uh, there was, I think, it's, it was a natural evolution to. Uh, see if these um, uh, agents would uh, uh, could be utilized in um, other types of uh, uh, malignancies, specifically primary uh, brain tumors um, uh, such as gliomas, uh, but also lymphoma. Um, and there are several projects uh, currently ongoing uh, looking uh, exactly at that uh, to see if patients who uh, harbor um, uh, glioblastoma uh, can uh, respond to these agents. Uh, I think at this stage it's too soon to, um, to speculate, or I, mean, I guess we can speculate, but it's too soon to know if these uh, agents uh, would have a meaningful um, uh, impact on survival of the patients with um, uh, primary brain tumors. And I think uh, one other issue that we're worried about is um, the side effect profile. 
um, because these agents modify immune system and modify immune responses, uh, they tend to uh, create inflammatory reactions, um, which uh, uh, can be, uh, especially in the brain, uh, potentially uh, maybe not harmful, but certainly uh, can impact uh, patient symptoms um, uh, due to the, the nature of the, the location of the disease. So I think we're still learning, uh, learning more about the efficacy of these drugs, but also learning about um, the side effects and, uh, you know, and, and the response to them. Um, it has been uh, known uh, from prior experience, um, especially in, in melanoma, that uh, immune therapies can uh, make the disease uh, worse, if you will, before it gets better. Um, and uh, I think the key in, um, in uh, utilizing this drug is to, to know that uh, you need to wait. You need to wait for the response. It's not going to be an in instantaneous uh, response to the treatment. Uh, it's going to take probably multiple doses. It's probably going to take uh, weeks to months to actually see um, the response. So these are all questions that, that we need to answer. Um, uh, we also, um, again, given the, the location of the tumor and uh, imaging technologies, uh, we need to, to, to understand the changes uh, that these therapies cause uh, to the brain and to the tumor itself uh, to then interpret uh, the MRI imaging and, and understand if what we are seeing is tumor progression, uh, is it a response to treatment, is it what we call pseudo-response or pseudo-progression? So these are all questions that everybody's uh, really uh, excited about, but they're also uh, causing a lot of anxiety in the field um, because obviously um, it's sort of a, an unknown, uh, uncharted territory at this point. Um, and we're not only learning if these treatments would be successful, but we're also learning about what, what will they do to the, to the healthy brain and to the diseased brain and how do we interpret uh, the findings.